everybody how is it going i am lucas and today we are going to be looking at an album from massachusetts metal band revocation called the outer one so the very first track on the album is called of unworldly origin and the entire album starts off with a which it, it sets the tone for their entire album that's what you're going to get throughout this whole way is a lot of balls to the wall metal uh, it's very fast, it's very in your face, it's very energetic, it's very busy. It's a great album opener. It slows down, it slows down a little bit in the middle of the song, and it picks up and gets heavier. Um, you have solo going on, you have a little dual harmony solo going on. And then the song ends uh, on the same angry riff that started the song. So very good opener, very good template for what the whole album is going to give you. So the second song up is That Which Con Consumes All Things. This one opens up with a guitar riff. It opens up with like a sparse guitar riff and the drums are doing these crazy fills in the background, which it sounds cool because it's all over the place. Uh, it stays fast with the verse. It becomes less busy during the chorus uh, and then it picks back up again for the verse. The song changes times and it changes times and riff halfway through. You see that a lot in a lot of these songs in the album. Um, it's sort of like a last track, but it keeps the speed. It gets a nice little solo work going on again. You get a time change in there. And it goes back to the opening riff again, and it has another transition, and it ends on a, on a very slow headbanging part. It, this would be this song was probably going to go over great live because of that little ending part. The next song up is going to be Blood Atonement. It starts off with some um, with some phase guitars going on, and it sounds really cool. Then it kicks in. It starts off a little bit slower than the two songs that came before, which is good because it's a nice little change of pace. Uh, the chorus, it picks up speed once again, it goes verse, and it goes back to the chorus again. Then a little bit of, we get a clean slash breakdown part, but it kind of comes out of nowhere. It's just like some little guitar chords plucked a little bit, which, which is nice because it's a good contrast. It kicks up, goes fast again, and it slows back down again. And we got a nice little solo, and it ends on that 3-4 feel. This really feels to me like a vintage revocation song to me. Um, it's not as busy as the two songs that came before. It's a good change of pace. Next one up is the Fathomless Cap Catacombs. It's a classic revocation riff to start the song. It's the most fate straightforward song on the album. Uh, it has a riff change in the middle of the song. It's almost as if we get a whole new song when the riff changes because you got a lot of good lead playing going on. And then it ends on the, and then the song itself ends on the chorus. This one too is one of the less busier songs on the album as with Blood Atonement. Then number five, the title track, The Outer Ones. This song is cool because it starts off with like this um, whole tone type of scale going on in it. Um, it's it's very dissonant sounding, which is cool. Kicks in hard for the verse. The kicks up even faster for the pre-chorus. Then it has a nice little solo, and it keeps that whole tone theme throughout the rest of it. Uh, the riff, once again, it changes riffs in time right after the solo, and the rest of the song ends on the riffing. It's this song is really cool. It's uh, it, it it gives you a bunch of different movements. It kicks you all over the place, but it's nice. And the sixth song on the album, Vanitas, it's the slowest song on the album so far, but it is pretty heavy. It's slow time wise. Picks up a little bit for the chorus, but it's still kind of laid back. It has a nice short little bass interlude, which you actually get to hear the bass tone for the first time by itself, and it's nasty and grindy, which is really good. After that, it goes back to the guitar riff and toward toward the end of the song. Then we get a nice little solo. Then the song ends on a super heavy note. This one would go great live, just like the with that which consumes all things, these two would be great live. Number seven track, which is called Ex Nihilo, it is Latin for Out of Nothing. This is the one and only instrumental song on the whole album. It's heavy, it has plenty of movements, it, it has kind of the same concepts that the songs up above it did. The eighth track on the album, Luciferous, that's a funny word, so that ten times says Luciferous, Luciferous, Luciferous. It starts off really heavy, has a lot of bass, double bass drum going on. The riff changes for the verse, it gets busier for the chorus, relaxes. Towards the mid half of the song, from being super busy, and it goes into a halftime feel toward the end of the song. It has a solo, which it, it the time changes again. It gets faster and busier. Change back to the calmer feel toward the end, and then it ends on some slow bends. Once again, the song with lots of movements going on, lots of busy work going on. Then the last track on the album, A Starless Darkness, starts off with an awesome riff. It goes into some harmonized guitar. Uh, octaves. It has a slow, doomy feel. It's a great closing track. It's heavy. It wraps up all the songs and songs that came before. We only have nine tracks on this album, but a lot of them are very long. I think the shortest song on here is I think around four minutes and twenty odd seconds. So uh, most of the songs are five minutes. 
So you have a lot of content going on here. What do I think about the album? I think this album is super solid. All the songs feel well put together. They feel like they were hashed over. They feel very well constructed. They don't feel random. I mean, a lot of the songs change time signature and key, but they mesh well together. It doesn't feel like a riff salad. Um, the lyrics are good. There's a lot of guttural singing on here. It, it's uh, vocals and styles a little bit different from the past two albums. I really got into Revocation for As Great As Our Sin and, and I listened to a lot of Deathless, so that's what I'm referencing it off of. Um, it sounds great. The mix is really good. It's nice and wide. It's nice and clean. Mixing the master is really good. Um, it's no surprise. I'm going to have to give this a 5 out of 5. Uh, this album is fantastic. It's everything I thought it would be. It's it's very perfect. There really isn't a weak song on here. I mean, one of the songs is not as busy as the other one's a little bit more laid back. I mean, you can maybe consider that a weaker song, but it's not really weak. It's still good. It's a very complete album. I like it a lot. Enough about me. What about you? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments down below. For me, I'm going to have to be out. Peace. Play.